This video is about chapter 24 on comparing means. In this chapter, we will look at inference, meaning hypothesis tests and confidence intervals, about the difference between the means of two independent populations. Okay. Specifically, we'll learn about the two-sample t-interval for the difference between means and the two-sample t-test for the difference between means. We'll also talk briefly about the pooled t-test and confidence interval for means. Now, you will notice as we go on in this course that you'll see new kinds of confidence intervals and new hypothesis tests, and in this chapter, we'll learn about a few more of them. Okay, um, and you'll see even more after this chapter, okay, but there aren't that many more. Uh, but pay attention to how they're similar and how they're different from the ones you've studied in the past. These ones will be similar to your um, one sample t interval and your one sample t test for means. So, um, the mean of a sampling distribution is usually pretty simple. Okay, but the standard deviation is more complicated. So I want to start by looking at the standard deviation for the difference between two population means. And for that, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem of statistics, okay, um, which is the square root of one of them squared plus the other one squared, okay, which simplifies to this, okay. Now again. We don't usually know the population standard deviation, and so we estimate it using our sample standard deviations and use a standard error of the square root of um, s sub 1 squared over n1 plus s sub 2 squared um, over n2. Okay, and here is the sampling distribution for the difference between means. Okay, now just like always, this should look something like z equals x minus mu over sigma, but now you're dealing with two populations. Um, and so you have a, this x is y sub 1 bar uh, minus y sub 2 bar, and the mu is going to be mu sub 1 minus mu sub 2, okay, over the standard error, which is that thing we just talked about. Okay, um, and the assumptions and conditions are those are very similar to the ones um, for the t-test and the t-interval. Okay, there is the independence assumption. There is randomization, where um, the data must be collected from a random sample, um, and um, you shouldn't sample more than 10% of your population. Um, the nearly normal assumption is still the same, where you have very small samples. Um, then it should be close to the normal model. If it's larger, um, you can be more forgiving. Okay. Um, now this, you should check this for each group, not just one of them. Okay. For each sample, you're checking to make sure that each one is nearly normal or large enough. Okay. Also, a new one is this independent groups assumption. Okay. The two. Uh, means should come from independent groups, okay? If they're related, um, that turns into something else that we'll look at actually in the next chapter. Okay, so here is um, a summary of the two sample t interval for the difference between means, okay? So here is your interval equation. Um, these should look pretty similar, but you're finding your estimated difference plus or minus some t star value, which again comes from your inv t function, um, and then the standard error, which is that thing that I just uh, showed you a little bit ago, your square root of s sub 1 squared over n1 plus s sub 2 squared over n2. Okay, now the tricky thing with this one is that the degrees of freedom is an n minus, is not n minus 1 because you have two samples and two n's. Um, actually, the, the formula for the degrees of freedom is actually down here, okay? Now, um, you do not have to memorize this. In fact, you will never have to calculate this by hand or with a calculator. Um, we just use technology. We use the, um, the two-sample t interval on the calculator, and it will find the degrees of freedom and use that for us. So you never have to do that one by hand. Here is a quick example of finding a confidence interval for the difference in sample means. So researchers are studying the role of internal and visual cues in determining how much people eat. 
and they conducted a survey in which some people ate soup from bowls that secretly refilled. I'm really curious how they did that, but anyway, they did it, um, and these bowls secretly refilled, um, and they're testing to see how much more those people ate than the people who finished their bowl. Um, so, you know, looking at visual versus internal um, cues in determining how much people eat. Okay, and they're looking at the difference, uh, refill minus ordinary, of how much people ate. Okay, and we're looking at a 95% confidence um, interval for this difference. Okay, confidence intervals have four parts. Um, you first check the additions, and they said they've already done that. Again, the, the two most important ones are randomization and the um, large enough sorry, the um, nearly normal condition, because these sample sizes are both 27, um, it's important that they're roughly unimodal and symmetric, okay? Um, so we've done that, then we state the test, the, the um, confidence interval we're, you're using, um, and we are using a two sample um, T interval for the difference between means. And when we calculate that, I go to my calculator, uh, because I have to use the degrees of freedom anyway, um, I go to tests, I go to a two sample T interval, two sample T interval, which is um, zero um, in the list. Now in your calculator, well, you'll look at this more when you have one in front of you, but you have uh, two options for input. You can do data if you have all the data values or stats, okay? And here they gave me stats. So I'll pick the stats option and type in X sub one, and already here so you can see it, um, X sub one, um, I will put in 14.7 because um, I want to look at the refill minus the ordinary. And um, S sub X1, I will have 8.4 um, and N sub 1 will be 27. And then X bar 2 will be 8.5. Um, S X2 will be 6.1. And then finally N sub 2 will be um, 27 again. And the confidence level is 95. And then it asks the question pooled. Okay, and we'll talk about that later on, um, what you do with that yes or no. But for now, I'll pick no um, and hit calculate. And I find the confidence um, interval is 2.1818 comma 10.218. Okay, and then my conclusion in context is I'm 95% confident that when people have refillable bowls, they eat between 2.18 and 10.2 more ounces of soup. Okay, and that is our um, conclusion in context. Okay, next is the two sample t test for the difference between means. So when you're doing the difference between means and you have some hypothesized test, almost always it's going to be zero, um, but you have a hypothesis test of mu sub one minus mu sub two is equal to some hypothesized value. It's almost always zero. So very common is mu sub one minus mu sub two equals zero, okay? But keep in mind that you have to specify what these variables are. Okay, so if it's um, mu sub n, sorry, mu sub m minus mu sub f for male and female, that's fine. But if you're using ones and twos or some, you know, um, you know made up number, uh, then you have to specify what those uh, variables are, okay? Um, the T score, is found using this formula, which again should look like that z equals x minus mu over sigma with stuff plugged in. And so our x happens to be the difference between our sample means minus our hypothesized difference over the standard error, which is this formula that we've been using a lot in this chapter. Okay. Again, we will use that special formula for the number of degrees of freedom, which um, it's so complicated, you don't, you don't have to do it by hand, and so you will use the calculator anyway um, to find the t-score. So let's um, do one, a quick example. Many coffee shops collect voluntary payments for the food consumed. Researchers at the University of Newcastle performed an experiment to see whether the image of eyes watching would change um, employee behavior. They um, alternated pictures, 
um, of eyes looking at the viewer with pictures of flour each week on the cupboard behind the honesty box. Um, and they measured the uh, consumption of milk to approximate um, the amount of food consumed and recorded the contributions in pounds um, each week per liter of milk. Okay, so they, they had pictures of eyes watching you or eyes, pictures of flowers, and see if there's a difference between how much people contrib contributed um, in the donations um, per, I'm assuming this is going to be, yeah, per um, per liter of milk that was consumed. Okay. Um, so um, a hypothesis test has five parts. Um, the null hypothesis is that the mu sub e for flower for eyes minus mu sub f for flowers is equal to zero okay i'm assuming that the difference between them that you know what picture is up doesn't really matter because they're not real eyes anyway and the hypothesis the alternative hypothesis is given from a difference okay so a difference has to do with um, mu sub e uh, minus mu sub f is not equal to zero and i will use an alpha level of 0 0.05 okay i then check my conditions my conditions are randomization um, and they alternated the pictures um, it doesn't really say okay i'm assuming they they randomly picked which one to go first um, but you know there could be some bias if they did not um, and i don't have the data to check the sample i'll say not enough information Okay, let me go on and state the test. I'm doing a two sample t test for the difference between means, and I will go to my calculator because um, I have to do that for the um, degrees of freedom anyway. So I go into stat tests, um, a two sample t test is number four towards the top. I get have the same um, options of data or stats. Here I have the stats, and so I'll pick the stats option, um, and I will have it. It's doing, I'm doing eyes minus flower, so uh, this is going to be 1. This is 2. So x sub 1 is 0 0.417, and s sub x sub 1 um, is the standard deviation, which is 0 0.1811, and 1 is 5. Um, x sub 2 is 0.151, s sub x sub 2 is 0 0.067, and n2 is 5. And then um, the alternative hypothesis is not equal to pooled yes or no. Okay, we'll talk about that next. Uh, for now, I'll say no, and I will hit calculate. Boom. And I get the p value as 0 0.0269. Okay, so with a p-value, I'll just say it out loud, with a p-value of 0 0.0269, which is less than alpha, I reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a difference um, in honesty when it's only a, photogra uh, a photographs of eyes that are watching. Okay, so what about pooling the data? Okay, we talked a little bit about pooling um, when we talked about two proportion Z tests. Okay, and again, the idea of pooling the data together um, has to do with whether or not we can assume that the standard deviations um, of the two groups are the same. Okay, now for um, two proportion Z tests, our null hypothesis was that the two proportions were the same. Okay, and the um, equation for the standard error for the um, for the um, difference in the in the two populations um, was dependent upon those proportions. Okay, which ended up being the same, and so we almost always pooled the data when we had a two proportion z test because of our hypothesis. Um, we would usually pool the data. However, for the two sample t test hypothesizing that the that the um, means are the same says nothing about the standard deviations being the same okay so we don't get the same um, you know conclusion about the standard deviations being the same okay however after looking at the data if you could assume that the variances were equal like the standard deviations were about the same then you could pool the data 
and pulling the data would give you more degrees of freedom and a lower p-value. So you're more likely to reject your null hypothesis if you correctly pool the data. However, when in doubt, don't pool the data for the means. Okay, we usually won't pool the data. Um, when in doubt, don't pool it, but if um, the standard deviations are very similar, then you can pool the data, which would give you a lower p-value. So here is this purple box. Um, really, it just summarizes everything that we've talked about already. Um, um, and so I wouldn't copy these down in your notes. Um, the important thing is that the calculator will ask you if you want to pool the data or not. Okay, um, and if you want to do a pooled t-test, you also have to check the equal variances condition, meaning that you've checked to see that the variances are similar, okay, um, in which case you would pick yes to pool the data, um, but when in doubt, don't pool the data. Okay, so this video was about comparing means and the two-sample t-interval and the two-sample t-test uh, for the difference between means, and also talked briefly about the pooled t-test and confidence interval for means. Thank you for watching.